Hi everyone, it is October 23rd, 2017. I want to thank a subscriber of mine who sent me along several articles, very interesting, on these FEMA buyouts. Harris County seeks FEMA help on home buyouts after Harvey. Look at this home. Wow. That is intense flooding, isn't it? Harris County Commissioner's Court on Tuesday voted to ask the federal government for $17 million to purchase 104 homes at the highest risk of flooding, even as more than 1,000 residents have called the Flood Control District in recent days to request buyouts of their Hurricane Harvey flood-damaged homes. The grant application for FEMA buyout funds is part of an annual application to Washington based on flooding in the previous two years, meaning it may not include homes flooded during Harvey. Wow! So homes flooded last year, two years ago in Houston? They're still working on buying out those homes. It's estimated that 136,000 homes and structures across Harris County were flooded as Harvey dumped more than 51 inches of rain in some areas, sending water into some homes for the third time in as many years and sparking increased calls for buyouts from property owners and local officials alike and more than 1,000 residents have expressed interest in receiving buyouts. Isn't our government wonderful? Isn't it wonderful how they help us? Dickinson demands people seeking Harvey relief promise not to boycott Israel. Now I know that a lot of you know about that, but mm, let's read. Before you can receive any money from the city of Dickinson to start rebuilding your Harvey damaged home or business, the city is going to need you to make a few promises. You'll have to follow all the building codes. Hmm, what are those building codes? Wonder if they're green building codes, international building codes as the United Nations has mandated an awful lot of countries to follow those international codes. Check out Agenda 21 and you'll see what I mean by those international codes. But then you also have to promise not to boycott Israel. Wow! Now, what do people in Dickinson care about Israel. Why do you, why would they put that provision in this grant application? Seems kind of bizarre, right? Yes, the ACLU has claimed that this requirement is an egregious violation of the First Amendment, and it certainly is. The First Amendment protects Americans' right to boycott. And the government cannot condition hurricane relief or any other public benefit on a commitment to refrain from protected political expression. Dickinson's requirement is an, egre an egregious violation, reminiscent of McCarthy-era loyalty oaths, 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 sorry, oaths, requiring Americans to disavow membership in the Communist Party and other forms of subversive activity. So here's the context. This year, Governor Greg Abbott signed into law the Anti-Boycott Divestments and Sanctions Bill, which prohibits Texas arms of government from investing in or contracting with any company that boycotts Israel and must make contractors sign the same verification included in the Dickinson grant application. <laughs> My God. Our governments, state, local, federal, it don't matter. They've sold out. 
how can anybody in Dickinson think that their government in Texas is actually representing them when they have to include this provision? Now, don't boycott Israel. As Israel's number one trading partner in the United States, Texas is proud to reaffirm its support for the people of Israel. And we will continue to build on our historic partnership. Anti-Israel policies are anti-Texas policies. And we will not tolerate such actions against an important ally. Makes you sick, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. The money the city of Dickinson is dispersing to pro-Israel flood victims comes straight from individuals, groups, or businesses in the forms of millions of dollars in donations. The mayor in Dickinson did not have a comment. She did not immediately answer questions, though they left a message. And they will update this story if that mayor gets back to this Houston Press. But everybody, I think, should be calling the mayor in Dickinson, Mayor Julie Masters. Call her and ask her. What the hell is going on, Mayor? What are you doing? Why are you conditioning hurricane relief on everybody promising not to boycott Israel? Insane, but in our face, Americans get it. Get it. Israel unfortunately owns a lot of our government officials and they have to do what Israel wants them to do. Great. Okay, uh, let's check out this. FEMA wants to speed purchases of Houston homes hit by repeated floods. FEMA just wants to buy up those Houston homes. They want to accelerate the buyouts of repeatedly flooded properties in Houston. Swamped yet again, this time by Tropical Storm Harvey. They're not even calling it a hurricane? <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Okay, and keep the federal government from paying to rebuild homes time and time again. Well, federal government, if you would just stop creating the storms, creating these floods, you wouldn't have to put out so much money to rebuild homes time and time again. What is this? FEMA considers accelerated buyouts of flooded Houston homes. Um, Sorry, Mayor, City, FEMA, discussing flood plain buyouts. When you see how all of this is connected to Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, you will understand these buyouts. And the mayor said the shelter at George Brown Convention Center downtown will probably close next week. Where will those people go? Because the numbers that you are receiving from mainstream media, they claiming that 150,000 or 165,000 homes were flooded in Houston, way low, very low. But buyout talks concerns many in Houston's Jewish community. Oh, really? Jews are concerned in Houston. They're concerned about these buyouts. A proposal to buy out thousands of flooded Houston homeowners, tear down their houses, and restore the property as green space? Green space! Green space. No human habitation. But it concerns many 
in this tight-knit Jewish population. So to all of you who leave those horrible comments, it's the Jews, it's the Jews. <laughs> it's evil Zionists. And Jews in Israel, Jews in America, the ordinary, average Jew is getting screwed as well. So, FEMA wants to buy out an entire uh, community and restore it to green space. I mean, it, it really couldn't be more in our face how they are targeting specific areas for Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 development. Um, in fact, remember those floods in Missouri? And if my computer will work, yeah, Fed's buying up farmland. They flooded. And Soros is in on it. Pennies on a dollar. Those floods created by the Army Corps of Engineers to save that little impoverished town in Illinois. They blew up the levees on the Mississippi and flooded, flooded prime farmland in Missouri. But now it all makes sense. That's right. A Missouri farming and ranching contact just got off a conference call wherein he was informed that the federal government is sending out letters to all of the flooded out farmers in the Missouri River floodplain and bottoms, notifying them that the Army Corps of Engineers will offer to buy their land after they destroyed it. Pennies on a dollar. They got this entire area. Pennies on a friggin' dollar. Speaking of evil sons of bitches, George Soros appears to be investing in farm ground through the same puppet company that he used to get into the grain elevator and fertilizer business. You know, if you, if you were around on YouTube for these floods in 2011, it was heartbreaking. It was so heartbreaking to see all of these farmers destroyed. And these, this flood was so massive that they would not be able to return to farming for years afterwards to repair the soil. So they had no choice but to sell out pennies on a dollar. But it was all deliberate. All deliberate. Missouri town under siege by the flooding Mississippi River seeking a buyout. You see, FEMA has been buying out whole towns. Interesting. In a New York minute, Ma said from her double-wide mobile home in Dutchtown, which sits in a Mississippi River bottom, I'm 75 years old. I can't fight this. No. People get so tired. Very tired. But I do want to say that the... Uh, that my subscriber who sent me this information on these um, on these buyouts interesting that she told me that the people in Dickinson were very upset and they were voicing their concerns and voicing their anger that they had to sign these grants promising not to boycott, boycott Israel. And did you know that Houston and the surrounding area had another storm? 
Storm, strong winds cause damage around Houston. This was yesterday, or two, three days ago now, I'm sorry. This morning storm rolled in fast and the rain came down hard. Paramedics and police responded to multiple spin-outs on I-45. A lightning strike caused a fire and people in Dickinson are cleaning up after a possible tornado. It was like 24 hours after the residents in Dickinson voiced their anger about this grant and they having to promise to not boycott boycott Israel. And suddenly they get hit with this kind of freak storm. Neighbors called 911 911 around 5 a.m. when a 10-foot flame lit up a backyard. Firefighters say lightning struck an oak tree. The bolt traveled through the tree's roots. Wow! And hit a gas line causing an explosion. When the lightning hit, all the bark shot off the tree broke a couple of windows and everything. Uh, this, the District Chief Michael Flanagan from the Houston Fire Department, this is the first time I've seen it where the lightning traveled through the roots. Was it lightning or was it a laser? The house wasn't damaged and the family renting the place wasn't home at the time. A few hours later, nine miles south, a pre-kindergarten teacher was on her way to work when suddenly a wave of water flooded El Camino Real Street, killing her engine. It was crazy out here. All the roads were flooded around here. You can see the water line. It was high. In Dickinson, the Harshbarger family is left wondering if it was a tornado or straight line winds that mowed down their fence and destroyed lawn furniture in their backyard. The windows started shaking a little bit. We heard the sound. What they say sounds like a freight train. The National Weather Service surveyed the damage late Friday morning and still trying to figure out what kind of system did this. What kind of system did this? Well, when man controls the weather they sure can hit a spot whenever they want. And it can look like a tornado, it could feel like a tornado, it could be uh, a laser that people think is lightning that goes through an oak tree's roots and then all of the bark comes flying off the tree. I've never seen that happen with lightning. Like most people in Dickinson, they are still dealing with Harvey damage. This is not what they needed. After Harvey and everything, and now this, it's like, can we get a break? No. No. Hell, this could have been brought upon you just because some of your residents were complaining about that grant that included a provision that said you can't boycott Israel you might have gotten punished. So, um, let's see, other federal buyouts. Flood-stricken historic town. Moles. Moles. Federal buyouts again. Look at this woman. Okay. In December 1, 2016, Diane Hines stands in front of the mound of furniture and other belongings pulled from her home after Hurricane Matthew in Princeville, North Carolina. Hines' home was rebuilt after Hurricane Floyd in 1999. This time, she said, she's ready to move elsewhere. That's right. Keep up the flooding. People get tired and they're ready to sell out. They just can't do it any longer. Her ruined furniture, books, pictures, and other belongings lie stacked at the curb, left there by volunteers with Samaritan's Purse. Hines doesn't even go on the porch. She doesn't want to live there again. 
It was a small one-story house, which was built in the same spot as her previous home after Hurricane Floyd knocked the old structure off its foundation in 1999. She's 63, well, was 63. I feel like it's time to make a change. That decision, however, doesn't entirely rest with her or with hundreds of other Princeville residents who might consider moving after the October storm. Yep, FEMA. It's there. The four-person town council will vote soon on which of the three options to offer homeowners. Elevate homes, repair damaged homes, or let FEMA acquire the homes of people who want out. FEMA would demolish those homes and turn the land into green space that can never be built on again. Wow! What is this with FEMA? It just wants to create this uh, green space all over. Green space. Green space in Houston. Green space in, in North Carolina. Green space all over. Florida Risk Study. Hmm. Let's check this out. Florida Flood Risk Study identifies priorities for property buyouts. August 17, 2017, just before Irma hit Florida. Let's see. A study of flood damage in Florida by scientists at UC Santa Cruz and the Nature Conserv Conservancy proposes prioritizing property buyouts based on flood risk, ecological value, and socioeconomic conditions. Forecasters say an above normal hurricane season is likely in the Atlantic Ocean this year, while a rising sea level is making Florida increasingly vulnerable to dangerous flooding. So let's see, why do they want to buy all of these properties the study shows the location of more than 15,000 repetitive loss properties in Florida, which collectively filed more than 40,000 claims against the National Flood Insurance Program between 1978 and 2011. Uh, well, why do they want to buy them out? Oh, this study identified properties in surrounding land in Florida where buyouts can reduce future flood risk to socially vulnerable communities and simultaneously promote the restoration of the floodplain to a more natural condition, green condition, more green areas. They'll destroy the homes that are flooded and they won't rebuild. So, let's see. Oh, this is Ginny Mae, the buyout authority for loans impacted by Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma for single family issuers. September 21, 2017. Just, just about a month after this study. Tampa, St. Petersburg, Miami. Um, you, of course, also have these greedy mother friggers. Vulture investors swarm to Houston as flooded homes sell for 40 cents on the dollar. God, can you imagine being a vulture investor? We pay cash for flooded homes. Don't fix it, sell it quick close. The whole thing makes me feel like there's a bunch of vultures sitting on my back fence. They're waiting for the dead body to fall over. 74 year old Paul Matlock lives with his wife, disabled from MS. Matlock is desperate to leave and is considering this vulture investors offer 
of 120,000, half the home's value, three weeks earlier. That was before the flood in Houston. And one of the six other investors made an offer of 55000 Wow. All right. Mega regions. America 2050. Mega regions. You see all this gray area? There will be no people living in these gray areas. There will only be people living in the mega regions. You see around the area of North Carolina where they want to make it green. Well, there are green areas in Florida as well. Texas. Now you can click on the link below and you can look at this mega region map. Texas Triangle. Let's see if it comes up. Come on. Come on. Up here, please. Oh boy. Oh, here we are. Hey, Cascadia. I'm going to get into Cascadia and Northern California and Front Range. Well, that's going to be another day. But how about that Arizona? That Arizona Sun Carter. Another day. Southern California has got a mega region. But Texas Triangle. Okay. Texas is a awfully big state, isn't it? It is, boy. Wow. See all this gray area? No one will be living in it. The Texas Triangle, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth. But don't worry, you will be able to maybe take rail service up to Oklahoma City the Gulf Coast, you will be the slaves for oil, shipping, that's your job. Um, and Piedmont Atlantic, well that's, that is uh, upstate, upstate South Carolina, up, upstate North Carolina or pretty much half of North Carolina, I guess, um, into Georgia and good old Atlanta. And Alabama, Florida, all of this gray area, white area. These are your mega regions in Florida. It's going to be Jacksonville, it's going to be Miami-Dade. Um, but let's do Texas first, Texas Triangle. The reason why they're buying out a lot of these homes is because they want to make areas green where no humans will be able to live. And they keep flooding these areas because they want to renovate those areas. Gentrification. Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 gentrification. That's what it is. So, the rail service. And I'm, I'm sorry for my computer, but yes, Oklahoma City. The rail service for the Texas region, Dallas, Fort Worth. These are the areas that will have stack and packs. Austin, San Antonio, Houston, Beaumont, Lake Charles, Lafayette, and you will have rail service that if you're lucky you might be able to go visit Oklahoma City. 
Many people roll their eyes at this. I don't get it. But Cascadia, here is the region for you guys in Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, 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 British Columbia with high speed rail while protecting the area's unique and pristine environment. Principal cities, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver. Yes, and as you read this, you'll see that your populations, man, are just exploding when the truth is the population numbers are going down because an awful lot of people are dying from all of the poisons that we are saturated in. But just to tell you, the cities of the Texas Triangle, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio. So the Cascadia, hey, here's your rail service that will, guys, you're going to be the luckiest, I think, because you're going to go visit Canada. But that's it. There will be no human habitation in these areas. Stack and packs right along the rail lines. That's what's coming. Florida. Your principal cities, Miami, Orlando, Tampa, and Jacksonville. That's it. Yes, your populations are growing and growing in leaps and bounds. Don't you have the oldest population in the country? Don't you think that these people are dying off? Yes, they are. So, Northern California, here were all of your fires. And let's see. Wow, what is this? <gasps> okay, I will link below to everything, obviously. But this is the um, 4 million commutes reveal new U.S. mega regions. Now, this map actually looks like there's going to be an awful lot of area available to people. There won't be. Um, this map shows the mega regions and this map here shows your northern California region. Santa Rosa, Sacramento, Berkeley, Oakland, Stockton, Modesto, Santa Cruz, San Francisco, down to Monterey, and all of the little towns around it, goodbye. Goodbye. I still try to talk to people around here about weather modification, geoengineering. They roll their eyes. I tell them to not roll their eyes because it is unbecoming of an adult to roll their eyes at information that somebody is giving them, the information received by research, the rolling of the eyes by an individual who has not done any research, is rather unbecoming. So there you have it. That's why FEMA is doing all of these buyouts. That's why they're accelerating their buyout programs. That's why they're encouraging people to buy out rather than rebuild. It's all part of Agenda 21, Agenda 2030. That's why we're having so many quote unquote hurricanes that are flooding causing massive, massive, massive flooding, especially in the same areas. I can't, I cannot end this video without saying there are so many people still suffering in Houston and the surrounding areas. There are thousands suffering from the fires in California. There are people who are suffering from 
Irma in Florida. And more and more people, more and more people are going to be suffering the consequences of these evil uh, globalists who want to transform the world, transform our country, destroy it, and keep us all locked into these mega regions in stack and packs. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you all had a nice weekend and you are ready and raring to go to see what happens this week in the U.S. of A.